If you've ever driven at night, you've probably been spooked by an animal crossing the road in front of your vehicle. Perhaps the only reason you spotted it at all were its brightly glowing eyes, like miniature headlights staring back at you. And if you own cats or dogs, then you've no doubt noticed that same eerie eye shine in your furry friends. But did you know this ability might have something to do with everyone's favourite prehistoric reptile group? <coughs> no, Trypanosaurus, I'm obviously talking about dinosaurs. So why do so many mammals have eyes that seem to glow in the dark? Well, it's due to a structure called the Tapetum lucidum, an adaptation that evolved to help nocturnal animals see better at night. This iridescent layer of tissue lies just behind the retina and reflects visible light back onto the eye's photoreceptor cells. While this blurs the image slightly, it's well worth it, since it essentially allows the photoreceptors to double dip, giving the animal twice as much light to see by. It's why you'll never see a cat trip over something in the dark. If it ever happens, it happens when it's too dark for us to see anything at all. While you'll find reflective membranes like this here and there all over the animal kingdom, in deep sea fish, crocodiles and even some spiders for instance, it's particularly associated with mammals. A wide variety of mammals, from the tiger to the cow, have this feature, even some that don't stalk their prey at night. And while it's not true to say that most mammals have Tapeta lucida, that's largely because rodents, which make up a whopping 40% of all mammal species, don't have them. Except the lowland packer. Don't ask me why, I've not managed to work it out. There are 2,700 species of rodent, the majority of them are nocturnal, but just one of them has this thing. The packer is just built different, I guess. A lot of disparate mammal orders are equipped with these special night vision goggles, and they can produce eye shine in all different colours. In cats, it's usually yellow, whereas in dogs it tends to be more light green. In lemurs or alligators, it's a reddish orange. So if you see this at night, check your surroundings. If you're in a tree, it's probably not an alligator, but otherwise it's time to move. Sometimes it seems like the colour reflected by the tapetum lucidum has a distinct purpose. The Indian mongoose, for instance, is not nocturnal, but it does live in dark, dense foliage. Its tapetum is bright green, which might be helpful for reflecting the hues it's most likely to encounter. The reindeer is an even better example. The tapetum of these animals actually changes colour depending on the season. It goes from golden in summer to a deep blue in winter. Its eyes become much more sensitive to low wavelength light when this happens, helping Arctic reindeer transition from the long summer days to the perpetual winter twilight, which, you'll notice, is the same deep blue. Being able to see better at the blue end of the spectrum, even into ultraviolet, makes objects like tasty moss or terrifying wolves stand out better, because they absorb UV light. But did these groups all evolve their shining eyes independently, or was it a feature they inherited from a shared ancestor? There's a popular theory called the nocturnal bottleneck, which suggests that modern mammals have certain characteristics because of how our very earliest shared ancestors lived. In the Jurassic period, early mammalia forms like this Morganucodon mainly made their living hunting bugs in the dark of the night. This was because we mammals were ruthlessly persecuted by dinosaurs who would make fun of our nipples whenever they saw us, or possibly they were just occupying all the diurnal niches. It's not such a clear-cut thing as it once was to say that dinosaurs only came out in the day, because the idea that they were cold-blooded and needed the heat of the sun to increase their body temperatures like modern reptiles has been on shaky ground for a long time. And in fact, by measuring the size of the scleral rings in dinosaurs' eyes, science has shown that some small theropods were nocturnal and probably hunted the early mammals. But whether or not we were safe from the terrible lizards at night, their dominance over the sunlit hours kept us confined to the shadows. Fossil evidence suggests that the mammals exploded in diversity in the last 65 million years, shooting out into the many shapes and sizes they take today. But if the meteorite had never hit, we'd probably still all look like this. So the nocturnal bottleneck theory suggests that a prolonged period of nighttime living during early mammal evolution may have had significant consequences that are still noticeable in modern mammals. And hey, if we spent 100 million years or more scurrying about as a group of mice-shaped creatures, you might expect to see a few leftover quirks. This theory could explain not just the prevalence of the tapetum lucidum, but actually the way that our entire sensory system is rigged up. Mammals generally have very keen hearing, for instance, but poorer eyesight than other vertebrates. Apart from primates, mammals don't have a fovea, 
a little depression in the retina which, which provides very sharp vision in the center of our field of view. But many reptiles, birds, and even some fish do have this structure. Mammal eyes are also less densely packed with a type of color sensitive photoreceptor called cone cells. Not only do we have fewer cone cells than the other vertebrates, we also have fewer types of cone cell, which means we are much less good at seeing colors. Mammals have lost two of the four types of cone cell that early vertebrates evolved, which means almost all of them have red green color blindness. But, like with the fovea, we're the exception. Our primate ancestors re evolved one of those lost cone types about 35 million years ago, restoring what we would call full color vision. How that came about is probably worth a whole video in itself. In terms of our ability to see all the pretty colors, though, we're still worse off than the other vertebrate groups, many members of which are tetrachromatic, with four different cone cell types. What tetrachromatic vision actually looks like is hard to say if you're not a bird, fish, or lizard, but presumably it means these animals can see shades that we can't, or differentiate between colors that to us would look identical. Apparently, there's some evidence that a very tiny percentage of humans may have tetrachromatic vision too. But I don't know. I think I'll believe it when I see it. So as you can see, mammal eyes share a number of characteristics, which seem to de-emphasize sharp or color vision as a trade-off for being able to see better in the dark. With that in mind, while we don't know for sure that early mammals had the tapetum lucidum, it would certainly seem to make sense for them to have all inherited this trait from a common ancestor that lived alongside the dinosaurs. However, there's a wrinkle. See, there are actually several different kinds of tapeta in mammal species. Most mammals, including hooved herbivores and cetaceans, have a tapetum made up of layers of collagen, the same stuff skin is made of. This is called a tapetum fibrosum. But carnivora, like cats and dogs, have a completely different structure, a tapetum cellulosum. It's called this because their tapetum is made up of a tile-work pattern of cells filled with crystalline materials repurposing substances used elsewhere in the body that just so happen to be shiny. And marsupials have different tapeta within the subgroup. The Tasmanian devil has a tapetum fibrosum like the hoofstock, but the opossum has a tapetum that's actually located within the retina. Although obviously it's still behind the photoreceptors, otherwise it, it just wouldn't do anything. Except give the opossum pretty eyes, I suppose. And they don't need any help with that, thank you very much. So all this is a pretty clear-cut case of conversion evolution. And what it seems to prove is that this structure couldn't have come from the most recent common ancestor of all the mammals. The different tapeta types must have evolved independently after the main mammal groups diverged. But that doesn't necessarily mean we have to throw out the idea that the tapetum formed during the nocturnal bottleneck. I've got another fancy named theory up my sleeve, which could help salvage this thing. It's called the delayed explosion hypothesis. So remember earlier when I said that fossil evidence shows the mammals diverged 65 million years ago as a direct result of the dinosaurs dying out? Well, that's an accurate description of what happened to our physical forms, but DNA evidence now shows that the main mammal groups are actually far older than the Cretaceous extinction. It now appears that many of the mammal clades we know today formed pretty far back in the Jurassic period. It's just that, until the ruthless dinosaurs died out, they were all stuck looking like little shrews. So it's still perfectly possible that the tapetum lucidum is an older structure, and that different mammal groups develop their own types of reflective layer during the nocturnal bottleneck. We'll probably never quite know for sure. But whether it's 60 million years old or 200, these nifty mirrors have clearly been around for a very long time. By this logic, mammal groups that split off later than, say, the monotremes, but which lack the tapetum lucidum, including primates like us, must have once had a reflective layer and then lost it due to evolutionary pressures. And it's not hard to guess why this might have happened. If you're not nocturnal, having sharp vision is more important than being able to see well at night. And if you're most active during the day, having bright sunlight focused directly onto your retina is almost certainly a bad time. This is why cats' pupils need to contract into such tiny slivers whenever they're exposed to bright light. Now, as you go about your day, spare a thought for creatures like the poor Tarsiers who lost their tapeta I must wish they hadn't. These adorable little guys had ancestors who were diurnal and therefore lost the shining eye trait. That turned out to be poor forward planning, however, because since then, Tarsiers have returned to the night. Instead of regrowing the tapetum lucidum, however, they've had to adapt by making their eye sockets as big as possible. A Tarsier's eyes are so big that they cannot move in their sockets. 
and the animal has instead adapted to rotate its head 180 degrees, like an owl. And with eye sockets this big, there's not much room for brains in that skull. In fact, each one of Atasia's eyes is larger than its brain. I think now we've gone through tapetums inside and out, what they are, why they work, and even how they developed. That's about all I've got for this video. So to quickly sum everything up, why do cat's eyes shine in the dark? Well, it's to help them avoid velociraptors.